In the headlines, Abia PDP gubernatorial candidate Uche Kone dies one month to elections. Bandits fire rocket propelled grenades into Zamfara town. Nigerians sustain appeal for extension as CBN's deadline for use of old narrow notes looms. And on the foreign scene, WHO issues alert as contaminated cough syrup kills 300 children in three countries. Hello and welcome to Trust News Update. I'm Dashan Husseina Usman. We begin on a sad note where the Abia State People's Democratic Party governorship candidate, Professor Uche Okonne, is dead. A statement from the deceased son, Uche Okonne, said his father died on Wednesday at the National Hospital Abuja after a brief illness. The statement added that the late Abia PDP governorship flag bearer was recovering after taking proper treatment in the United Kingdom but relapsed a few days ago, leading to multiple cardiac arrests from which he didn't recover from. Moving on to security, bandits on Tuesday fired a rocket-propelled grenade towards Burnham Magaji town headquarters of Burnham Magaji local government area of Zamfara State. Burnham Magaji local government shares boundary with troubled Batsari local council of the neighboring Katsina state. The local government has been a hot spot for bandits' activities, largely being perpetrated by the boys of Ankarami and one Ardo Neshawari, a vigilante leader who craved anonymity, said armed criminals had earlier attacked some farmers tending to their lands just a kilometer east of the town. He said a motorbike with armed men arrived and began firing grenades towards their direction, adding that one of them exploded and left a large crater near a stream. He added that no one was killed or harmed in the attack, and the police, state police command could not be immediately reached for comments. The Plateau State Police Command says it has put in different modalities to foil activities of kidnappers, armed robbers, and other criminal elements in the state. The State Police Commissioner, Bartholomew Onyeka, disclosed this while parading some suspected criminals in the state. Ado Musa completes the report. The Plateau State Police Command had in recent time recorded successes in the areas of arresting kidnappers, criminal elements, and recovery of arms and ammunition. In his recent briefing, the commissioner said the achievement in the fight against crime follow new strategies employed by the command, adding that the personnel will continue raiding criminal hideouts in the state. Existing synergy between the police, other security agencies and strategic security help groups such as the Hunters, the VGN, Neighborhood Watch has also tremendously made our task of policing the state rewarding. It will be recorded that my renewed strategies in combating crimes and criminalities have disorganized criminal activities in the state and translated into what you can simply call Operation Victories as evidenced in the recent recoveries of stolen vehicles, release of one of my dutiful police officers, from the brutal hands of his captors in Panchin LGA, the release of His Royal Highness Reverend Dr. Azir Wakili, the paramount ruler of just East local government, among others. And the commissioner also said the command had arrested arm dealers who engaged in selling arms and ammunition in the state. In line with our constitutional mandate of detecting and preventing crimes and apprehending offenders, my command has prevented illegal importation of arms into the state, arrested the arm merchants, and recovered firearm. Police patrol team attached to Silver Highway Office of the command, while on routine vehicular patrol operation along Shane, Bukru Route, just south, AGA, intercepted a gold colored Honda Accord car when the vehicle was thoroughly searched. 200 rounds of G3 live ammunition, 7.62 by 5.1 mm, 80 rounds of AK47 live ammunition, 
that is the caliber of 7.62 mm and 56 pieces of type O6 live ammunition and one empty magazine were found. The commissioner, however, called on all in the state to cooperate with the police and other security agencies to get rid of criminal elements in the state. Ado Musa, Trust TV News, Joss. Still on security, troops of Operation Forest Sanity of the Nigerian Army have rescued 16 people who were kidnapped by bandits during Operation Spanning Bernangwari Kaduna Road in Bernangwari and Igabi local government areas of Kaduna State. The State Commissioner for Internal Security and Home Affairs, Samuel Aruan, disclosed this in a statement saying the troops responded to a distress call along the Udawa Manini axis of the Bernangwari Kaduna Road during which they foiled the attack and rescued 16 persons in the process. He explained that some of the rescued persons who sustained injuries were rushed to the hospital for treatment. Similarly, troops of Operation Forest Sanity responded to another distress call from Gonandekta village in Igabi local government area and laid ambush on Bandit's crossing point in Murabonghuda village. During a firefight, one of the bandits was killed and one victim who was injured during the rescue operation was rushed to the Jaji Military Cantonment Hospital for treatment. Furthermore, in response to credible intelligence of bandits' movement around an interstate boundary area, troops of Operation Forest Sanity set up ambush positions around Mongoro General Area, which is around Chikum Bernangwari local government area, on the boundary with Shiroro local government area of neighboring Niger State. The troops engaged the approaching bandits and killed two, where one AK-47 rifle, one pump action gun, one improvised explosive device and one Bofeng radio and 10 motorcycles were recovered. Borno State Governor Babagan Azulum has received the second batch of additional 855 Nigerian refugees repatriated from neighboring Cameroon. The refugees were handed over to Zulum by Cameroonian officials led by the governor of the far north region of Cameroon, Mijinyawa Bakari, at a brief farewell ceremony in Morao on Tuesday. Bakari, while presenting farewell packages consisting of food and non-food items, announced the closure of the repatriation, totaling 1,300 refugees. Zulum, on behalf of Nigeria, thanked the Cameroonian president, other officials and host communities for taking good care of the Nigerian refugees in the last nearly nine years. The 855 Nigerian refugees residing in Minawa camp were received at a border community between Nigeria and Cameroon close to Banki in Bama local government area by the chairman transitional committee, Grema Terra. Point of sale operators in Bochi state have accused the Central Bank of Nigeria of not considering the plight of Nigerian masses in its new Naira regime. The operators who are reacting to the daily POS withdrawal limit imposed by the Apex Bank are also appealing to the CBN to extend the deadline to allow customers who prefer to use the POS then go into the banks. Trust TV's Adamu Imam examines the situation within the metropolis and now reports. The early days to stop using Nigerian old Naira notes, but a lot of people are still making transactions with the old ones at various points of sale. In Bauchi State, the operators lament on the situation, says they have no option despite the deadline. This is a short term, so it's not enough for us to handle this issue at this moment because there are people who are living in the rural, in the rural areas. With, they don't have even a single bank that you can go to one local government and you don't have to see a single bank in that local government. I don't think, I don't think this issue will solve this moment. We just want to collect. If, if, if we didn't collect, we will not do any transaction. We will just uh, stand like uh, we, are not do, uh, we are doing nothing. Uh, the money that is inside uh, at the hand of the people, it's all money. There is no uh, that new money. Meanwhile, customers across the state also share their experiences with the current issues compounded by the introduction of new Naira currency by the Central Bank of Nigeria while withdrawal cash at the automated tailor machines. 
We agree that Naira notes are the property of the government, but accepted as our legal tender. So it is not out of place that every bank should comply and issue enough of the new notes for circulation. Also, the limit for withdrawal should be extended to at least 40,000 Naira per day. We are still appealing. I was surprised to notice yesterday that my friend forgot his new Naira notes in his pocket and took the clothes that had them to do laundry. He later found out that the money had completely washed away and become colorless. Honestly, I think it is not good for our money to be looking like that. And the deadline is too close for all Nigerians to get those notes. We the masses are always at the receiving end. I came to this ATM after visiting other banks, only to notice that it is the old Naira notes that the machines are dispensing. Here there are new ones, but only one machine is working. Majority of people are not transacting with new notes because they are scarce. We are appealing to the government to prevail on the CBN to address the situation. However, recently the officials of the central bank went to some marketplaces in various states of the federation to make a serious awareness on the danger of holding the old Naira notes after the deadline of 31st of January 2023. Adam Imam, Trust TV News, Bauchi. In the same vein, as the deadline for the phasing out of the old 200, 500 and 1,000 Naira notes draws closer, residents of Nasarawa State are lamenting the hardship the policy has inflicted on them. This, they say, is as a result of the unavailability of the notes for daily business transactions. Abu Bakar Abdullahi sent in this report as presented from our studio. Like many Nigerians, residents of Nasarawa State are not happy with the stress they are going through either in exchanging the old Naira notes for new ones or in paying for products and services. Trust TV News observed that it is difficult to get the new Naira notes even in banks, while at some of the ATMs, customers can only withdraw a maximum of 20,000 Naira per day. It was also guarded that some vendors have already stopped collecting the old Naira notes while banks are still issuing old notes to customers. The government have given over 100 days for us to change our money to the new one. But quite unfortunate, there is no new note in the banks. The Nasarawa State Chairman of Traders and Marketing Association, Turaki Gamji, decried the hardship occasioned by lack of the new notes and called for the extension of the deadline to prevent public from losing their earnings. He said the association would continue to enlighten the public on the importance of depositing the old notes in the bank. Benue State Governor Samuel Ortom on Wednesday joined other Nigerians to call for the extension of the deadline for the use of the old versions of the redesigned Naira notes. The call is coming after the Central Bank of Nigeria on Tuesday, which insisted that there was no going back on the stipulated deadline despite appeals by the National Assembly, key stakeholders and bank customers. Orta made the appeal in Makurdi when he received the governing council of Joseph Saruan Taka University. He noted that going ahead with the January 31st deadline was tantamount to further increasing the pains of Nigerians. You're watching Trust News Update coming up after the break. How people with disabilities are coping with the high cost of living in Katana. Do stay with us. This is Trust TV, documenting the Nigerian story. Daily Trust presents 20th Daily Trust Dialogue. Theme, interrogating the 2023 presidential agenda. Panelists, Mrs. Ibukun Awoshika. Former Chairman, First Bank of Nigeria. Professor Jibrin Ibrahim, Professor of Political Science and Member of the Board of the Center for Democracy and Development, CDD. Dr. Yetinde Anibaba, Lecturer, Analysis of Business Problems, Lagos Business School. Dr. Eugene Enahoro, Human Capacity Development Specialist and CEO, Heltoni Services Limited. Chairman of the event, John Cardinal Onaikon, Archbishop Emeritus of Abuja. 
Royal Father of the Day, Al Haji Samaila Muhammad, MFR, Sarikin Karishi Abuja. Date, Thursday, 25th January 2023. Time, 10 a.m. Venue, NAF Conference Center and Suites, Kwarimpa Expressway, near Next Shopping Mall, Kadu Abuja. For sponsorship and branding participation, contact 081 00 491 or 080-3392-8902. The event will be broadcast live on Trust TV. The July 1966 counter-coup that toppled the first military government of General Agui Ironsi has one living witness, his ADC. Then, Lieutenant Sani Bello was with him that fateful morning in Government House Ibadan. For the first time, now Colonel Sani Bello, former military governor of Kano State and multi-millionaire businessman, speaks to Trust Television on how Ironsi and his host, Colonel Fajui, lost their lives and how he survived to tell the story. As we were jumping to the Land Rover, we had a machine gun fire. Prrr. Dada rushed back. What happened, Sabijo? So he was trying to run away. And we shot him. Who was it? Fajwi. They killed Fajwi. Catch up on this bit of living history on Trust Television on Saturday, 28th January, between 8 and 9 pm, and in Sunday Trust, 29th January. Documenting the Nigerian story. Welcome back and thanks for staying with us. If you're just joining us, you're watching Trust News Update, a recap of our major stories. We told you that Abia PDP gubernatorial candidate Uche Kone dies one month to elections. We also heard that bandits fire rocket-propelled grenades into Zamfara town. Moving to more stories, a professor of virology, Oyewale Tomori, has advised Nigerians to ensure improved vaccination of their children as diphtheria continues to spread and more deaths reported across four states in the country. He also said the worst is not over as the disease could still spread to other states as a result of negligence in vaccinating affected persons with the prevalent vaccine. I think it's probably going to occur in other states. Uh, I think it's just gradually coming. Um, it's a accumulation of incomplete vaccination of our children. And over the years, uh, we have been accumulating vulnerable children. So if you have 100 children this year and you vaccinate only 60 of them, that means you have 40. Next year, you have the same thing, the number becomes each. Um, we're probably getting one or two cases of diphtheria in the past time, but now we have this large number of vulnerable children, and they're coming about the same time. That's why we're shouting epidemic or outbreak or something. I think it's a failure of the past, whether we like it or not. If we had done our immunization up to 80% or more, we won't be talking about diphtheria. If you have been vaccinated, you're so being protected. You know, there's no doubt about that, and that's what happens. Uh, 
like yellow fever. You vaccinate a large number, and then you can reduce the spread. Like polio itself, you have your large number of children, then you don't have what we're circulating vaccine derived polio. So those are the kind of things. So raise your immunity coverage for all your children, and then you can prevent a lot of this vaccine preventable disease. That's the only sense of vaccination. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Physically challenged persons, especially in communities where most residents are low-income earners, are ruining the harsh economic realities of the present-day Nigeria. Katsana is one of such states where most of its inhabitants are people living below the United Nations poverty line. Abdullahi Yamadi takes a look at the lives of some physically challenged persons and how they struggle to make ends meet. The report. Tukur Lurwanu, a professional shoemaker and an NCE holder from Federal College of Education, Katsana, says most of their members are in abject poverty. Though Tukur admitted that a greater percentage of physically challenged persons in Katsana have received trainings on various skills, he says many are out of business because of high cost of materials. Under my control, the people that are behind me in making shoes those are physically challenged. I have at least 10 physically challenged people. But as you see me here, nobody is behind me, left and right, back and front. Why? Because of the expenses of life and the changes of life. These physically challenged persons who are engaged in various businesses and handicrafts were forced to close down due to the high cost of materials and lack of capital. <laughs> Before now, I was into tea and bread business, and I was doing very well. But unfortunately, after the coronavirus pandemic, coupled with the surgeon cost of materials, I was forced out of the business. I had about four people working under me, but right now, I'm struggling to feed myself. I had a capital of close to 500,000 Naira, Due to inflation, I am now in packaged water business. All I had went down the drain. In spite of all this, there are still some physically challenged persons who are comfortable in their businesses, but not without challenges. For us, we are still able to get a little that can take care of our daily needs from this business. We can feed ourselves, pay school fees, service our tricycles, and assist others where necessary. However, we need more empowerment and better patronage. The physically challenged persons in Katana are positive that their problems would drastically reduce if the government establishes a commission that will take care of them. Similarly, the appeals to northern leaders to champion a cause that will empower their members and help reduce street begging and other vices. Abdullahi Ismayamadi, Crossed Television News, Kazana. Tragedy struck at dawn on Wednesday in Akure when a commercial motorcyclist conveying a passenger to the hospital crashed into a stationary truck, resulting in the death of the two. The accident, which occurred at 5.45 a.m. on the airport road or Baile in Akure, North Local Government Area of Ondo State, later attracted motorists, commercial motorcyclists and passers-by who gathered to mourn the loss. A source who did not want to be named said the accident occurred opposite the residence of Chief Olufalae of Akure. The source said a truck owned by a block-making industry broke down beside the road two days ago but was not moved. The Ondo State Police Command's public relations officer, Olufu Milayo Dunla Miomisonya, who confirmed the incident, said the corpses have been deposited at the morgue at the specialist hospital, Akure. And finally, on the foreign scene, the World Health Organization has issued alerts to countries to prevent, detect and respond to incidents of substandard and falsified medical products as contaminated cough syrups kill 300 children in at least three countries. 
WHO in a statement said over the past four months, countries have reported several incidents of over-the-counter cough syrups for children with confirmed or suspected contamination of high levels of diethylene glycol and ethylene glycol. The body has since issued three global medical alerts addressing the outbreaks in the Gambia, Indonesia and Uzbekistan. WHO called on key stakeholders engaged in the medical supply chain to take immediate and coordinated action. It further called on regulators and governments to detect and remove from circulation in their respective markets any substandard medical product that has been identified in the WHO medical alerts as potential causes of deaths and disease. And with this, we've come to the end of Trust News Update. Don't forget to follow us across all our social media platforms. I'm Dashan Husseina Usman. Thanks for watching.